Hello and welcome to Sengas Extremists. Hey, Chris. Hey, Juan. How are you? I'm good, thanks. <laughs> so uh, we gather tonight, right, for talking about Chaos Space Marines and the Codex. Yes, we have played the Codex quite a lot, both of us, and I think we have a pretty good overview of the Codex right now. Yeah, I think so too. So first of all, what what can you expect uh, in this podcast? It um, it will be mainly about the Chaos Space Marines Codex, the current status quo and the competitive meta and the competitive play. We will take a look at Emperor's Children. Um, we will take a look at the other legions like Black Legion, Night Lord, Creations of Bile World, Eaters and Red Causes. And also talk about the legions which are a little bit down under like um, Alpha Legion and Iron Warriors. And uh, after that, we will take a look on um, the World Eaters... Um, spoilers releases or um hints we got already and uh, yeah january you can listen to this podcast on spotify deezer and itunes and uh if you're listening on youtube you can actually use the time codes to jump in between the topics we are basically going for an open-minded discussion about it we played the codex fairly um often different legions and also on tournaments so yeah you will get a good insight on the codex um chris want to start yeah i think uh, before we start i think we should just for my opinion at least we should say that uh, the codex is actually a very good book all the legions Indeed. even the even the weak ones have play if you build and you if, uh, invest some effort you can make strong uh uh, builds strong lists and uh, that they may not win you a GT but they may win you a lot of games and that you will have fun with them so I think it's clear from the book I think it's one of the um, I, I love playing it I've been playing it since it came out I've played different legions and I love playing it yeah I mean generally speaking it is a really big book like it's it, it's very sick um it has eight legions i think in total in it and um i mean generally speaking it is uh, a very solid codex i mean the london gt was won by uh, we had empress children against empress children in the finals so that kind of speaks for itself um chaos space marines have won several gt and also um some a lot of rtts without being over the top in my opinion they are not like an eight tier a top tier faction uh, at least when it comes down to secondary or basic um, profile stat lines, but um, a good player with a good list can still get something out of it. And um, so it's a pretty jam packed book um, yes. with a lot of in it. And I think you will need you would need like one or two years uh, if you want to test everything what's possible in the book. <laughs> Uh, to a certain degree and um, what else is possible with the Chaos Space Marines book you can mix it up with Demons to a certain percentage we'll come to that later and uh, you can even mix it up with uh, Chaos Knights right? Yes uh, I think uh, the, I think the way they have made allies especially for a Chaos faction by giving the um, one detachment the Chaos Agent of Chaos keyword without losing your secondaries and without losing your monofaction uh, bonus is actually one of the best things they have done. And I think uh, hopefully something like this will continue being uh, across in the next books and also in 10th edition. Uh, and I think uh, this is like the best way to do kind of soup lists rather than uh, uh, what was in the past, basically. <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering how they approach Chaos because it's a very complex army, um, a very complex faction in terms of having a lot of data sheets, having a lot of different legions, and um, yeah, even that mixed up with demons because demons also had like have an own codex, but still, uh, I think they really excel when you mix them up with Chaos Space Marines. Indeed. And we have seen that in great effect in the last uh, month or so when uh, people start taking uh, whatever CSM plus uh, Flamers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Flamers will indeed get a high uh, hit on, on the next GT, I think. Uh, there's um, yeah. no question mark behind it. So um, just 
from the basics for the people who listen. Um, so we talk about chaos as a single faction. You can play them Chaos Legion, uh, Chaos Space Marines Legion solo. That excludes um, at the current state. Today is like end of November. We don't have a World Eaters Codex yet, so they are still in the book, more likely, no? Yes. Yes. Uh, they are still considered part of the CSM book. Yeah, they are still today. considered part of the CSM book at this point, but we will not cover them mainly because the Codex will release in a very short time. And um, we have legions in them it should be night lords creations of bile world eaters red causes alpha legion iron warriors black legion and empress children which is a lot so you can play them okay. mo mono by them alone uh, abaddon now is basically a supreme commander and can be taken into every legion you want to even in every chaos army uh, if you play um, full chaos knights you can add abaddon if you play full demons you could at Abaddon. <laughs> if you um, play full knights, you can add Abaddon. Yeah, that's what I said. Full, and full death guard, you can add Abaddon. Full thousand sounds, you can add Abaddon yeah. if you want to. Although I think that there are no so much synergies between Abaddon and Death Guard and Thousand Sounds, that's why you don't see him. Yeah. Abaddon himself has a very sick stat line for the point it costs. He's incredibly good. Uh, we see him in a lot of tournament lists. Uh, the second way to play them is. Um, as we said, mix them up with demons. You have to be careful because you shouldn't um, exceed 25% of your power level points of your total army to be demons. And they have to come in a separate detachment and demon will lose their warp storm abilities and their uh, specific deep strike ability. Yeah, it's kind of a shame that this kind of style right now has only because flamers are so undercosted in their points. It has become basically only flamers. No, I, I play my Night Lords with only three flamers. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but we will come to that in a minute. And yeah. the third option is to mix them with uh, Chaos Knights. In case you watch the latest battle report, Christos just did that with the World Eaters and uh, Chaos Knights. Yeah. Uh, they complement really good uh, each other. I think they are complementing better than Imperial Knights in Imperial Armies, except uh, for the case of Adeptus Zoritas, where they really shine. Yeah, mainly because Adeptus Zoritas have a lot of assets, and basically you the 400-something points that you would use to flex, you just take a detachment of Armagers, and basically that's it. The, yeah. the, the the alpha power of the Adepta Sororitas is not lost with that, basically. Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, first of all, um, the major legion in this book are Empress Children. Uh, Christos, you played them. Want to tell us why they are the um, top choice uh, the most players are choosing when it comes down to playing grand tournaments? Or what's your? Or let's come to that after. But um, you played um, Empress Children a lot. Tell us a little bit of uh, how they play. What are the specialties uh, they have? And yeah, tell us a bit. Yeah, basically they have uh, their legion trait is basically they have two points. First one is they ignore heat roll modifiers, which is really strong. That means they ignore death cover. They ignore minus one to hit from. Uh, uh, hard like wins and Eldar and everything. Uh, they ignore uh, everything, uh, flyers like aircraft, minus one to hit. And also, also six, from chain fist or power fist. Uh, yeah, the, any any minus one to hit. They can ignore any or all hit modifiers. So it doesn't matter if it's on shooting or in melee, but they ignore both. And the other is sixes to wound, uh, give an extra IP, which is also really good and comes into play when, uh, especially against Armor of Contempt, and allows you to have some extra IP because um, that's one, I would say, of the weakness of the book that your IP is not really the best. Yeah. Espe especially of the weapons you want to be taking, the units you want to be taking. Yeah. Adding to that, um, we have uh, that's only the Legion trait, which is really good. Uh, the whole army has to be Slanesh, Mark of Slanesh, uh, and which basically means the whole army has fight first so um no matter how you run into them into melee so basically the, the legion trade makes them better in shooting makes them better in melee right so for yeah. ignoring the modifiers and then you have um uh, better ap which is also good like you said and then you have an amazing thing with everything being slanesh always fight first on your whole army basically so you can always um 
fight one-on-one -on -one and uh, without spending CPs on interrupts or whatever. You don't have to care about that. Yeah, and actually uh, that people need to be careful uh, as a caveat because that applies only to units that can take a mark, which means Demon King units don't fight first. Um, people need to be careful with that when they are playing against Emperor Shield and they have a unit of Warp Talents or a unit of Possessed. They don't fight first because they cannot get a mark. So that's a kind of a downside of the Demon King units for they don't synergize well with the Slanesh keyword. But yeah. on the other hand, because they get the Slanesh keyword, because uh, that's how the book is, uh, suddenly powers like uh, uh, Pain, for example, the Delightful Agnes can be applied to a unit of uh, Possessed, for example, because it says a Slanesh unit, and they become a Slanesh unit because they are in Emperor Children Army. So oh, really? there are, I didn't even yes. know that. Yeah, uh, it's clear if you read the book, it says that um, all the units gain, uh, they lose the counts undivided keyword and they gain the slanesh keyword, basically. Hmm. So stratagems and everything that would affect slanesh, uh, not only core, but slanesh key keyword uh, units suddenly apply to units that usually they wouldn't apply. Yeah, so Eldari can actually use her anti slanesh stratagem against your whole yes. army. <laughs> yes, that's uh, yeah. Eldari can really, they can really spike screw your day. Yes, they can really spike against you. Um, now the second point is they have a really solid legion trait that is very good all around. Buffs the melee, buffs them in shooting. They have the best troop unit in the book in my opinion, which is the Noise Marines. Yeah, we have to say that Noise Marines are usually an uh, elite, elite yeah. slot choice, and playing Emperor's Children, they become basically um, troops Troop. with OPSEC. Yes. Objective secure included. Yeah. And uh, so you don't have to waste points on legionaries. You don't have to waste points on cultists. You want noise marines anyway. And they become OPSEC, which is amazing, like in World Eaters, for example, Corn Berserkers or whatever. Um, yeah. Tell us what, what loadout is the loadout that most people are playing. And um, there's one special weapon we want to have in there. And tell us a little bit about the noise marines. Yeah, so the noisy miners usually can come basically with uh, sonic blasters, mm. uh, which is basically strength four AP one damage one sonic weapon and a blast master, uh, one one per unit. Doesn't matter if it's five man unit or ten man unit. You can always have only one blast master per unit. So that means that you usually want to go five man because the blast master is strength eight AP three, uh, three damage and sonic sonic weapon means that on half range you do um, one damage extra. So four so damage on half range. <laughs> yeah, which uh, which is quite, uh, I think it's 48 oh, 36, inches. Uh, 36, yeah, yeah, 36 inches. So when you are at 18 inches, you basically do have uh, half damage. Uh, double, uh, you shots. do four damage. And it's a three-shot weapon, heavy three. And it has also an assault six profile, which is strength five, AP two, one damage. And in half range, that one does also two damage. Uh, AP3, two damage is also quite good in yeah. half range. And but Assault 6 is really good, uh, which means <laughs> you can advance it and shoot it without penalty because you don't have any penalty. Yeah. So, so it, basically, it, if, you, if you take four of those um, Noise Marine squads, you have four weapons times three shots, strength eight, <coughs> minus something, three to four damage. Yeah, minus three, three to four damage, or eight, or uh, twenty-four shots, strength five, AP three, uh, two da one or two or two damage. Yeah, and that um, in the standard elite, uh, in the standard yeah. slot. So you, you yeah. already, your standard troops already bring a really deadly weapon. And, yeah. And um, yeah, they have also sonic weapons, but you can also equip them with melees, right? Yeah. So what's your loadout on them and why? Usually, so you can always have chainsword and bolt pistol or sonic blasters and the champion as can take whatever he wants. So what has become the loadout, and I think uh, Vic VJ from uh, UK was the first one to di who did that, is basically what you want is a blast master, right? Because it's uh, such a multifunctional weapon. It's good against elite armies with uh, 3D wound uh, 
and four wound uh, models and also against um, tanks and uh, it's a really all around weapon you want the blast master and then on the sergeant usually you put uh, on the champion you put usually a power fist and i prefer to put a Chainsword also, so that you have kind of duality on attacks, and the rest three you make them chainsword and bolt pistol to keep them cheap. It's also the cheapest loadout, right? Yeah, yeah. it's also the cheapest loadout. The parfis makes it a bit more expensive, but with four attacks, uh, hitting on twos because they have all of them have strength and uh, icon of slanesh, so plus one to hit, ignore the minus one. So suddenly you have four attacks hitting on twos with a parfis. How you get so, the plus one to hit? With the icon of slanesh. Oh, ah, yeah, right. Yeah, because because they can take both the mark and the icon. The mark allows them to fight first, and the icon allows them to have plus one to hit in uh, melee. What happens is basically you have a really good obsec unit, a bit fragile because they are marines. Three up save, two wins. It's not the best uh, defensively. Uh, but they can hold objectives. You can play them passively, you can play them aggressively. And because they fight first and they have the power first, they can actually really do some damage in melee. And uh, people, if they are forgetful and they charge and you attack them, you can actually wreck their day. Um, so everything may- everything becomes a little bit more deadly in Empress Children and they have a good mix between melee and range. Um, that's basically... Yeah. The other thing is the secondary isn't even that good, I think, right? No, the secondary is, I think, one of the worst in the book. <laughs> yeah, but, they, but they, I think they, the Legion trade and uh, troops uh, sum up for that, so you have a good... Yeah. You come out, you have, uh, you have uh, other... Uh, reasons to play and, yeah. uh, uh, and I think the, the 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 combination of Mark and Slanesh also in fight first and ignoring the modifiers to hit make also the Terminator brick that is we have seen in almost all the Cow Space Marines lists up to now uh, of ten uh, Terminators Re- uh, can be very aggressive. You load it out with chain fists and power fists, and basically you hit on threes. With a one CP, you hit on twos always, and they become really good uh, output, also offensive output instead of, uh, instead of defensive output. Because as a defensive output with the delightful agonies and armor of contempt, they are basically two up save with five plus fill no pain. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's already good at all, um, but. The second thing we have here is they have a good combination of warlord traits and stratagems, right? Yeah. <clears throat> the warlord traits, actually, you don't usually take a lot of the warlord traits uh, of the um, of the Emperor's children. You go usually take uh, the generic warlord traits if you don't take Abaddon, because Abaddon basically takes three warlord traits. So that's a different discussion about Abaddon. So usually the relics is the ones that are really... Um, important here uh, but I would say uh, the relics they have not so good also uh, you prefer to take Black Room of Damnation the Intoxicating Elixir for example in one character if you want to Flames of Spite uh, mantle, uh, and uh, as a wallet trait but the m- most important uh, I would say uh, relic is the Mantle of Traitors which is a generic one uh, that allows you to do one epic deed stratagem once per battle for free, and you have also full hit rerolls. Uh, that epic, that, and uh, because they have an epic deed stratagem that allows you one uh, to make one unit fight last. Uh, for 2 CP usually, right? Uh, yeah, for 2 CP usually. Now it costs 0 CP once per battle, and de- uh, depending how you use it, you can easily uh, protect your alpha unit if, you, if your opponent uh, doesn't avoid you, your heroic intervention range, basically. Yeah. So overall, um, summarizing Empress Children, uh, I think we did it already. Um, good stratagems, not only the fight last, they have a couple of more. The, um, if we want to, I think there are two or three major ones. Okay, the, tell them. Yeah, the, the, one, the one which I think is one of the best stratagems in the book is Honor the Prince. You can basically have an auto advance of six. Or you, when you deep strike an inf- or you when you uh, you advance, uh, when the, if you use it in the movement phase, you have auto advance six inches, and if you use it in the charge phase, you have basically a six plus d six charge instead yeah, before, of two d six. Before it was uh, changed, 
dice to six, but now it is yeah. a d six plus a d6. natural six. Yeah. And the third one. And the third one is basically fight on death. They yeah, have a stratagem that makes them fight on death. Uh, of course, they have other stratagems that give them extra strength, extra AP, but they are a bit expensive and people don't usually, at the moment when you are in the game, usually when you have to use them, people are dead already, but they can be really clutch. And uh, I would say one key stratagem is also the six-inch heroic intervention for characters or three-inch heroic intervention for a uh, unit. Yeah, in combination with the fight last. Yeah, in the combination with fight last. And so, to summarize also, they have one of the best characters, named characters in the book, which is basically um, Lucius the Eternal, who has by himself uh, inbuilt fight last. Yeah. And so, he's really good in combat also. So um, I summarize, um, we have really good stratagems. We can use fight last for 2 CP one time for free, basically. Well, it's a relic spot, but so you pay 1 CP, right? Yeah, uh, but you get more from that. You can heroically intervene to make sure to you bring it on. You have Lucius. You can give two times fight last. Have fight first on your whole army almost. Um, and your deadly weapons, which are usually minus one to hit, are suddenly no longer minus one to hit for your trade. And uh, you have a really good st- uh, troop choice, which can hammer out a lot of damage and shooting. And um, I mean. It's like almost a more reliable melta, right? You have three shots, strength eight, not not so much AP, but uh, at least flat three damage, sometimes four damage. So it could be better than a melta. You have at least four four of them, which makes like 12 shots or 15 shots if you want to, just along that without the rest of the army for troops you all need anyways. And then you have uh, these good stratagems. And yeah, you basically kill stuff. And for mismatches, you have possibly in the whole book uh, at least mi- the least mi- mismatches because you can handle range and you can handle melee better than the most in the codex. Yeah, um, I would say Emperor Children, the mismatches I would say is Elder. But Elder right now are not doing so well. Uh, but Elder, I mean Craft Wars, right? Harley Queens. I think Harlequins suffer because of the fight first. So basically, if they multi-charge you, that you will take down a lot of them, and they are not that. They they rely on killing you before you kill them, basically. Yeah, and you can even put fight on death where they charge first. Yeah, first, exactly. So. And also with the shooting and ignoring the uh, the modifier to hit, basically it means that you basically can pop a boat. If you are lucky with the with one or two shots, you can pop a boat basically, unless they are really lucky with the luck dice. So even Harlequist is not a bad matchup. Yeah, I, so I the first usual... matchup I have seen is actually Sisters. Uh, I have played them, and Sisters is, I would say, is not a good matchup mainly because That's Sisters are anyone. Played. This is an ugly matchup for anyone. Yeah. Anyway, but um, that's for Emperor's Children, I think. Pretty solid. Yeah. Yeah, uh, and we both agree, as you can hear. And um, yeah, so there's, in my opinion, only one more legion which is kind of all around, which is a black legion. Yes. Um, there's, yeah, about black legion we don't have to go as deep as in um, Emperor's Trillion. You don't see black legion that often, right? Yes. Um, Abaddon. Um, is Black Legion as a Black Legion commander, so you also get with his chapter master reroll a wound reroll, which is pretty funny on rubric marines and stuff like that. So you suddenly get flamers which have D6 plus two, right? Yes. And um, can reroll wounds and stuff like that, and they can turn off OPSEC and, and so on. Uh, they're also a pretty decent army choice in terms of shooting and melee but i think emperor's children excel in the most things in comparison to black legion the the black legion can do one thing uh, like better than i would say emperor's children which is board control mainly because of the of the first of all the obsec aura they have a, basically a relic that gives them uh, uh, basically like uh, uh, rights of war from uh, space marines any unit within 6 infantry has OPSEC so suddenly they can make whatever unit they want OPSEC uh, and also they they turn off OPSEC 
with uh, if you have a unit of legioners. Yeah, but you, two CP. That's super. You don't see that three or four times a game. No, and I think that hurts them a bit because they have really good stratagem. I think they have maybe comparable to uh, to the Emperor Children one, but they are more expensive than the Emperor Children one. So. And that's the thing. And also the other thing with Black Legion is you have to choose what you build. Because you can you have a good all around trait, a plus one to hit when you're shooting the closest, or plus one to hit when you are charging, which basically negates the minus one to hit. So it's actually quite comparable with the Emperor's Children one. Mm-hmm. Um I would say that the, the the main problem with Black Legion is how you build up and because of the points and what you want to bring. Uh, you have to choose what you want to bring. So I say I would say that Black Legion in the book has the most um, adaptability to changing the meta, but it's not the easiest to build It's not the one. punch you need to win uh, GTs. Uh, no. Uh, I think, basically. Uh, I think that's, that's the main difference. The stratagems are good, but too expensive. And the list building becomes not monotone because you have to choose for one direction and um, it's not like you have a lot of mismatches with Black Legion but you have a lot less Punisher than Emperor's Children and not certainly a better secondary so uh, Emperor's Children live off by killing more than the opponent generally speaking where uh, they excel in comparison to Black Legion in my opinion yeah I agree Um, we should not forget that both are still Space Marines fragile in the current meta so being able to be offensively have a good output really makes it uh, to one step over the edge yeah um then we have three to four legions which are extremely good in a certain matchup but have but they suffer a lot from heavy mismatches and usually when you go to a GT or to tournaments um, you don't want to have a matchup where you are like ah, oh, okay here I'm like basically three po- 30 points behind and I'm playing uphill and if you meet up um, a player with an equal skill of yours you will possibly lose the game just for having a really really bad matchup um, I would start with the first legion because I played them a lot which is night lords yeah. Uh, um, Night Lords are basically, um, they have an aura which gives minus two leadership and um, they get plus one to wound against enemy units which are below half strength or on leadership five. So, um, said that, it's it sounds really average, but uh, you can make it work. First of all, um, I played like, 12 to 15 games with them and lost I think one one game uh, which was again a thousand suns but more than that they have an extremely good um, secondary where you get points if an enemy unit uh, model flees from a unit when you kill an enemy unit you can roll above the current leadership Um, if you do that you get one cp if the enemy falls back you get one cp and you can actually One one victory point you win yeah, not CP, victory points, right? And it's not limited. So if you kill six units and roll six times above leadership, you get six victory points on one round. So it's not limited, right? Um, which makes it really good. Uh, the th- second thing is, thing is you have uh, Demon Princes, you have uh, Raptors, and you have um, Chaos Spawn, which give Fear Sun in an hour. So you get down to minus three leadership. So a possessed lot of other, also, possessed, possessed also, also, right? So you go down to minus three with that, and if you combine it with uh, demons, what I did, um, you can go with a demon aura. You give minus four leadership debuff if you play it right. So um, I have a list which has like a lot of MSU concept with a lot of demons. I have sloppy by Piper uh, as a demon HQ, which is a Nurgle guy who can basically. Um, roll above leadership in the morale phase in 12 inch enemy unit and if you roll uh, above leadership with 3d6 i think it is uh, you turn off obsec <laughs> and you will always make it basically so you can really play good um, the objective they have a wallet trade which can turn off obsec and they have a really good combination of stratagems and wallet trades to build smash characters 
So you can really have really nice demon princes, disco robots, or master of executions. Um, the stratagems, so they can deep strike turn one, they can uh, hold a unit in melee, which is like uh, an engagement range. So basically, if you have a five or six man Terminator group, which charges into four enemy units and survives, uh, if it's Tau, for example, you can pull two CP, and it's not like with other stratagems of this kind, no unit in engagement range can fall back. It's not like one specific unit which I target with a stratagem, it's like no unit which is in engagement range with this unit can fall back. That's, That's really it's, powerful. It's really um, powerful. But yeah. uh, with minus three to minus four leadership, you even bring knights down to leadership five, and then suddenly you come with warp talents and wound them on fours. <laughs> Um, with a shitload of attacks uh, they have a minus one to hit stratagem so they are really great combination of a really good secondary which goes really well with their legion trait I think you have to mix them with demons you have to play them without Abaddon for the reason of points and they require a lot of good skill in uh, micromanagement to get uh, your debuffs the way you need it but if you can play that out it is a really powerful army uh, which also has a lot of fun uh, you will have a lot of fun playing them and but the problem is i lost my only game against a thousand suns because they are basically immune to morale so you cannot take your secondary so you would because the chaos space marine book in general we can talk about that after has very weak secondaries in my opinion so usually you would play something like okay uh, psych integration or warp um warp butcher one of both depending on the opponent's list and um then you would take the secondary for um for night lords and then you would take nephilim data or banners whatever you like uh the list um usually you have the tools to do it all the resources but Against a thousand suns, you cannot take warp ritual, you cannot take psych integration because they can ban for one CP with 3d6 addition in addition. So they um, combine the dice. Uh, you cannot take any psychic um, stuff against them. Same is like for Tyranids almost. And you cannot take your uh, Night Lord secondary because they will not flee no matter how much models they will use so you will only get one victory point if you kill an enemy unit and roll above leadership and that combined means um, you have a really uphill battle in secondaries which you cannot win against a thousand suns I would say one of the there are two things that were holding night, holds, night lords back in my opinion first of all Abaddon really doesn't mix well with the legion Abaddon, which is kind of an ubi ubiquitous choice in the book, most people play him, and he's I, I, all, um, usually basically in Emperor's Children makes sense with the roll hit rolls, gives you an extra thing, and everything. In Night Lords, really doesn't synergize well, right? No, he doesn't. But you don't need him, and um, yeah. yeah, he wouldn't help you uh, against a thousand suns. You don't have the only reason you fail against a thousand suns and Tyranids is because you cannot play your two secondaries. You cannot play any psychic secondary. You cannot play um, veterans of the long war. You cannot play the uh, secondary for night lords. You have you have two bad secondaries to fight them. Yeah. Basically, I, I would say night lords. Um, have the best like if we think a bit also about the future and even with if the flamers are nerfed which is expected in the next book and the next point update i think because you use uh demons for the aura debuff the minus one leadership uh in, and in order to trigger much easier your plus one to wound basically that's one of the main points of the uh, if you have uh, against a unit with leadership uh, five uh, equal to five or less, you get basically plus one to wound, right? Yeah, but the major reason is actually the plus one to wound is nice against knights, actually. Yes. But the main thing is actually that I want to uh, score my secondary, and um, yeah. it just synergizes so good with secondary. So uh, it's even better than the plus one to wound, actually. But the plus one to wound is a is a nice addition to that, yes. The plus one would give you play against, uh, because you are a melee army, and let's face it, the book right now, the most of the, there is no really hard-hitting melee unit against 
uh, units of toughness eight and more, the plus one to wound really helps you with that basically. Like if you play against guard now or against um, uh, the, the, uh, like a vehicle heavy like land drop fortresses like chaos knights, yeah. chaos knights, imperial knights. Uh, the plus one to wound really helps you kind of fight those matchups. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I played against Imperial Knights, and I was like, okay, uh, here uh, my blood letter bomb. I put a banner of blood charge. They make the charge. I have possessed, and uh, suddenly I go with strength five or uh, warp talents, whatever you want, and they have uh, leadership seven. And I bring them down to leadership four, or uh, they have leadership eight. I bring them still down to five, and I get plus one to wound against them. And uh, suddenly, you just need fours to wound against uh, small halverines, and the most of the knight players play the small ones. And suddenly, you chew through them. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's uh, what I would say was keeping night lords back. And I think. You don't see them so often. It's kind of an obscure selection, but I think um, because, and also the secondary, the first read, it was not really considered one of the best, but if you read again, I think it's better than even than the Bile one, the creations of Bile one, because not Copper Phase. Yes. So I would say that if people start uh, their meta adjusting, I think they have a lot of play with uh, Night Lords to... Yeah. <laughs> the book has a lot of flavor with Night Lords. But for me, I tried a uh, different legion, and for me, they're the hardest legion. Uh, they require a lot of skill, actually, because you need a lot of really good micromanagement. If you misplay your movements and your deep strikes and uh, your stratagems, you will lose with them, like heavily. They they don't forgive errors. Of yeah, they are movement is king with Night Lords. They, the, they are a very fitness army, I would say. If you want to play Night Lords, you really need to be very very specific on your movement phase. So, uh, Night Lords, in my opinion, one, one of the really great armies in the Codex, legions in the Codex, but um, the fact that you have won um, two or three very hard mismatches because morale immunity uh, would be a reason for me to not take them to a bigger tournament because suddenly if you face two times thousand suns out of five games you will lose two games if the opponent has equal skill or if you play against uh, sisters also where they basically are immune to morale with the miracle dice basically yeah but that's not a problem because um, um, sisters have a lot of MSU still yeah, true. The, the problem with Thousand Suns was you have two big blobs of Terminators, <laughs> and yeah. uh, with Sisters, I can at least say, okay, I will, I will kill ten units, and still can make ten points. With Thousand Suns, it's like, eh, I won't do that. <laughs> true. So, um, Night Lord's good, but heavy mismatch. Therefore, for me, not on the con tournament staple, but still a very good tier uh, army with the two major mismatches. Unfortunately. Um, Next one would be Creations of Bile. I played them a lot and you played a lot of, against them. Tell us what you think about Creations of Bile. Oh, Creations of Bile. They have arguably one of the most in the current meta um, amazing uh, traits, which is basically plus one strength, plus one move. And as we discussed, movement is king. So having that plus one move in a generally slow army, suddenly everything has movement 7 or if you are like uh, um, uh, possessed have movement 10 uh, Chaos Space Marines have movement 6 so and plus 1 strength really helps them push them a bit ahead uh, and the other thing is that they have uh, a fight on death if they haven't <laughs> fought that, f that fight phase they can basically attack back basically negating any fight first fight last you don't care at that moment of time because you know your unit will fight. So they are the best trader in the that, book, basically. That, that alone, without the plus one strengths and stuff like that, which brings you a lot to a sweet spot, but a lone fight on death against any melee army, you will trade always better. A alone for your, <laughs> for your legion trade. <laughs> There are very few armies that can trade better than that, and I would say Harlequins can trade better than you, mainly because uh, they, they have cheaper units and a lot more units, and they are obsec units. 
But other than that, I don't think there's any army in the meta right now that can trade uh, against uh, creation of value and say yeah. that in a positive way. Then they have a very good secondary. And for yes. creation of bile, you have to say you don't have to play Fabius bile. That's um, not yeah. any longer. You can leave him out and you should. Mm. The secondary is you get two points for killing one unit in melee, which you will do anyway. And you will get three points if it's um, additional. Also you, you can get two points for killing a normal unit in melee. And if you kill, a, I think, character, vehicle, or monster, you get three points. So you can score up to five points in one round, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And uh, that alone makes them, for me, tournament staple. But uh, they have also won a couple of tournaments. But there are so in melee you are basically untouchable if you play it right if you, you you trade better and that's what this game is basically at the very core of the competitive game is trading better than your opponent and still scoring and um, suddenly you have a very good secondary you can play and um, it doesn't take away something like banners nephilim data or the psychic stuff so you can score really high with creations of bile which is usually a problem of chaos space marines. And you trade extremely well against sisters, extremely well against any melee army which comes. Um, but you have a mismatch which is heavy, heavy shooting, so they might suffer against Votan or Tau. Uh, or even now against Guard, with a new Guard book. Yes, possibly. Uh, I would say what I have seen, people adjusting with creation of values, uh, I've been following up what they have been doing in the latest uh, tournaments. Uh, they have removed the, basically the ten, uh, the blob of ten terminators from creation of bile, and they go thirty man, uh, thirty uh, thirty man uh, possessed, uh, three units of ten possessed, one with the black rune of damnation, and you basically advance them the first turn, all of them, and then the second turn you are basically charging. Uh, no, you can actually um, to add that they have a stratagem advance and charge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so three units of ten possessed actually is one. Basically, it's like cost um, two. Like uh, two units of ten possessed cost more or less the same as uh, 15, 12, 13 terminators, which is amazing. So and they are quite tough to shift, especially with the minus one to hit in melee, and they are toughness five. And they have AP2 to damage weapons, which is not the best, but the two damage is really pushing them a bit. Yeah, you said it already, two stratagems, advance and charge, which also enables you to score your secondary in the first round. Yeah. If you have bikes or possessed. Mm, I run bikes with a mace, uh, overlapping damage. They will almost every time kill any screen. And then you have a stratagem minus one in, if you want to, to hit. And uh, which makes you a lot durable. Um, I played them a lot. Careful with Abaddon because um, he actually synergizes not with your secondary because every unit you kill with Abaddon is a lost point uh, for your secondary. The secondary is kept anyway, but a good opponent can feed Abaddon and um, deny you a win point with that. Uh, do, you, do you think that removing Abaddon would really benefit you like add more stuff that to have more board control because i, I think I'm, I'm having a really good run with my creations of bile including abaddon but i would be happily remove him um, to see how it goes because i also think think abaddon will be more expensive uh, i don't need him in the list that's the point but he he can hold a flank alone yeah it's like a missile that you can let loose and go somewhere but i think for example if you replace abaddon with a rhino and a unit of 10 uh, chosen on top of yeah. the rest yes that unit of ten shows can also hold a lot of the line. Yeah, right? so you're not dependent on Abaddon with creation of no. He doesn't even synergize with your secondary. But um, I mean, he's not, the, he's not the like the point. No, the only thing I would say good with Abaddon is creation of is that you can basically uh, have more efficient uh, offensive output, right? With the uh, real yes. hit rolls in one unit. But yes. but what I have seen right now, when you are going with full possess, for example that reroll hit rolls cannot go into possessed. So people are removing Abaddon because you, you basically don't really... 
Yeah. What, what Synergize I, anymore with the units also that you have. What, what I have to say, I tend to move away from uh, big blobs like 10 Terminators or 10 Possessed. Um, in my Night Lords list, I play only 6 to 7 Terminators, which is the absolute maximum I want to go for. And with Possessed, I also would like to go for 6 or 7 because 10 is most likely the overkill uh, often. I mean, what are you doing with 10 Possessed? Uh, if you charge the most units, you will not even fight with all Possessed. It's more about taking wounds away, so you could add another squad, maybe. Like maybe. Instead, of, um, instead of playing two times ten, I would play maybe three times, two times seven, and one times six, for example. I think the main reason for having the ten unit of possessed is basically they survive the further combat. Yeah, but because I they fight on death, and then you have like three or four possessed who can go in a unit charge a unit yeah. and wreck it so but, you can get maximum but, value but six, six possessed will wreck the same unit i don't but see they it. will die but they will die anything so, in general i'm i think for sparing a couple of possessed you could add other units like a squad of cultists or raptors to do r and D. I i think uh too big I, I'm not a fan of big blobs. I, I, I think this is an MSU edition and not a big blob edition. I know a lot of people play 10 Terminators, but people tend to go away from that already. Uh, I don't think it's an addition to play big blobs. Well, I have seen uh, the... Um, I think it depends on the where you are playing right now, right? Uh, I think in Germany and how we are with WTC, I think you are correct. But uh, in what how they are playing, for example, in LGT with... Uh, like um, with how the training is set up or in the US, uh, I think the big blobs still have a lot of play because yeah. mainly because of how the, the meta is. But um, I, I agree with you. I don't like the big blobs, but um, uh, but depending on on certain matchups, when you want things to die, for example, if you are playing Bile and you want against Knights, for example, a 10-man unit of possess most probably will kill a big knight a five-man or six-man unit of possess won't kill a big knight. Yeah. So uh, you have that also to consider because you don't have anything anti-tank except whatever your infantry can do, right? Yeah, it's, it's like a player-style question because I don't like the big footprint. It's a 40 millimeter base on 10 models, on 20 models yeah. and two units. Um, it, it's... It, it's a player style question. I don't like it. Uh, I see why people do it, but I would prefer smaller squads. Um, yeah, I, I'm. Uh, I'm in between. Actually, I like the big blobs. They they are fun to play with because they like it looks really cool in the. The, on the, the table question job. is not. The question is more like: Do seven possessed do almost the same job like ten possessed? Yes, uh, I guess certain matchup no. Yeah, but I think that's but, a gap you can live with. Because yeah. that possessed less gives you more points for other stuff. The the main problem I see is like it gives you more stuff for more points, but on the other hand, what are what are the other units that you will bring that will synergize quite well with the with the bile? Action, so, monkeys, uh, action monkeys to yeah, do. but but that's what I mean. Even with thirty possessed, they still have enough points to bring the action monkeys because mm -hmm. you don't bring Abaddon. So if suddenly, you don't bring Abaddon, yeah. yeah. Um, so, what, one one thing I would like to add to Creations of Bile is uh, the plus one strength also synergizes super with uh, Chaos um, chosen with the mark and icon of corn. <laughs> yeah. Because you go with the accursed weapons, you really go up on damage. Like you are to, strength seven, basically, at that moment yeah. of time. And yes. if you are... Um, Even if not, you, your chain swords, your claws go up to strength five. Six. Uh, six. Your, uh, and strength Claw. five and with mark of corn strength six yeah. yeah i'm just talking about plus one and um you can really bring your chain fist and power fist up to strength nine and it's uh, this plus one strength hits a lot of sweet spots especially in combination with corn i so think also, uh, uh, just to conclude with uh, creation while i think the advantage charge stratagem uh, frees you of going all the time with Mark of Slanesh and you can go with Mark of Corn to certain units because of the then you get plus two to your strength and, and also you get extra AP <clears throat> with the icon for example so mm -hmm. suddenly that actually Mark of Corn synergizes quite well with the creations of Bile yeah 
Yeah. So I think um, if I do a ranking up till now. Uh, Sh should we do with the third legion that I think is the same level as uh, Bile and uh, yeah, but, but, uh, and Light Lodge? Yeah, one one second. For for now, uh, my ranking would be. Oh, we can do the ranking after, right? So yeah. bring your legion. <laughs> Ward bearers, people forget them, but they are actually quite a big threat because yeah. it, uh, they, um, they suffer the same from what I told about Night Lords. I think they yeah. are really good in specific matchups and have a really hard time against other matchups. And I think they have one of the, maybe the third best after the Night Lords and the creation of Bile. The, their secondary is really good because basically it it's follows their playstyle, which is basically more defensive playstyle uh, because uh, they are very tough to shift because they have this relic that doesn't allow you to have hit rolls and wound rolls in combat. So basically it negates a lot of the offensive output of a lot of armies. Uh, you, that means also you, um, the prayer of illusionary supplication is not that needed if like you have a minus one to hit for example could be act the same as that illusionary supplication basically uh, in combat um, in shooting it's really useful but also the main point is that you have um, no hit rolls and no wound rolls which means uh, against this sort of battle they don't have any wound rolls any hit rolls which means repentia are basically um, the the output is not that good of repentia against them. Even Zephyrim are not that good. Yeah. And you have so, a five up Fino Pain, which uh, I like against mortal wounds. Yeah, yeah, against mortal wounds, which is huge against Tyranids and stuff like that. Yeah, and also the other thing is that uh, their secondary basically wants you to sit in the middle and do an action, and basically that means that okay, you want me, you want to kill me, just come to me. Basically, because with that secondary, you basically con you can combine it with warp ritual, which also is uh, you have a stratagem also to make a power that you fail undeniable, which also applies to psychic action. So they are really good army, but uh, the main problem of them is that they have bad matchups. Yeah, As, like that uh, lot. Yeah. But I think the... But what are your bad matchups with them? Shooting arms. They are bad against shooting arms. Like, um, uh, I think that's the main issue with them. Uh, and and they are right? And OPSEC, because your units are, tend to be not to be OPSEC. So <clears throat> there are builds right now of Ward Bears with, uh, where you add demons. And basically that adds a lot to negate those bad matchups basically because you play with one to two masters of possession you basically also they have warp locus so you can summon within six inches of the masters of possession and within six inches of your uh, opponent so they allow a lot more plays with demons which is also very fluff for bears but i think um, they have also really good stratagems like a full wound rolls for a unit of uh, of a demon kin unit is amazing, especially on a unit of uh, possessed, but they are expensive. And uh, in order to function, you need a lot of warlord traits and relics, which means that you start with zero CP, which is not good. Mm. And you rely a lot of um, auras, yeah, and ability ranges, which is um, a placer which forces you almost to play in a bubble. Yes, which can be in some missions really counterproductive. Yeah. Uh, so in the current, I would say, mission pack with the 6 CP, I think it's not the best Legion to play. But let's see what happens in the January book. Yeah. And it's one yeah, of those Legions that doesn't need Abaddon, basically. Yeah, but a good. lot of armies which rely on the rerolls and the uh, mortal wounds to be effective uh, suffer against uh, word, uh, word bearers. I mean, word bearers, like having naturally all the units have full hit rolls in combat is amazing, right? In a primary melee army like uh, yes. Chaos Space Marines, having the full hit rolls is amazing. You don't need Abaddon for that. It frees you Abaddon, basically. And uh, then you need to basically build up after that. Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, we have red causes. Yes. Um, 
I didn't. It's the only Legion I didn't really try among. We didn't try them on the channel yet, but I think we will soon do on some point. Um, I would they, like to try them, to be honest. They, it's they one of the, those armies that I want to try. They have advanced and charge. I uh, use uh, the trade on Abaddon, most likely, because I play Abaddon with my Creations of Bile very passively. And on some point, I will go, okay, for one CP Black Legion, he will get um, a Red Corsair's a Legion trade, which, which is advanced and charge. And suddenly, Abaddon comes out of... Uh, um, out of nothing and um yeah surprises the opponent but uh, with events and charge as a legion trade you can certainly build some cool stuff there are t the other point people forget on the other point of the legion trade is that models count as two models on an objective yes. and and vehicles count as five models which is really like if you yeah. think about it it's really good and i think you can make a hit and run list like with bikes you can charge fight and then move or something like that I'm there is a, a stratagem yes which basically says that if you um you charge with a unit of bikers and then after if you finish attacking after you finish attacking you can make a fall back move or a consolidate move, yeah, whichever before, you choose. Before the opponent even... <laughs> yeah, because it. you you are the activating person, so you choose the order of sequence. So that means that I fight, I move back, and then you can do. And that also negates fight on death, because the unit activates after I finish moving away. So you fight on death, but there's nothing else for you to fight. Yeah. So I think um, the secondary is not so mentionable, I think. Uh, um, I, I don't know. The secondary is uh, the secondary is not good. It's basically really not good. Uh, they have two major things. Basically, is that strategy that allows you them to uh, fight with a unit of bikers and basically fall back afterwards. And then the other thing they have is a unit can shoot and fire and fade, basically, which is really good also. Yeah. Um. Great. So that was for me like the better legions in the codex, and then we have Iron Warriors and also Legion. I would say um, for the Iron Warriors, they are one of the most under because I've been looking into Iron Warriors and creating a list for Iron Warriors. I think it's one of the most underrated uh, legions in the book because first of all, they can make the toughest brick of Terminators because they have no wound rolls. Like that's their legion trait. They ignore dance and light cover. And they have you have no wound rolls against them, right? So you can make an obs a unit uh, or with a you can make yep. a unit of terminators obsec, and they with the illusionary application basically you have no hit rolls against them, no wound rolls, and if you make them flyers with five plus fill no pain, I don't think there is anything right now that can remove that number of terminators one with a black wound of domination. And minus one to wound, there is a strategy, a dour duty to make them minus one damage. Yeah, okay, I agree. You can you can make Terminators tough, but um, I think the Legion suffers from a bad secondary. And um, at least here in Germany, we have s such a heavy terrain that you cannot really play out on demon engines uh, where you would possibly see them. Uh, or ten, I talked about ten ten blobs of Terminators. I try to move away from that, but yeah, I agree. On them, they are tough. And uh, if you try to play on a five marker map, you could uh, actually do something with that. But um, the stuff and the stratagems going for demon engines and shooting stuff, uh, the chaos shooting is not good. You can play decimators, but um, most of the armies which are currently in the game on the top can deal with two or three decimators and if if if, you, if they get the side they will kill them and um the problem is that the other demon engines in my opinion suffer from a too large footprint so um for me it's easy to block a mauler fiend or uh, uh, whatever with one katan just moving it and then you move block half an army if your opponent uh, focuses on, on on demon engines and um, i think the secondary is sees no play because the opponent chooses to to uh, where you put uh, markers on the battlefield and you have to go there and um I, th I don't think iron warriors are the army which wants to go somewhere on the battlefield where my opponent dictates me to i think iron warriors um the demon engine thing is a bit i would say with iron warriors you 
you need some demon engines, but I think heavy demon engines build, as you say, is on the way to go. I think uh, like no. one or two Forge Fiends are really mandatory in Iron Warriors list the, because of the stratagem to basically uh, make a unit count as double the models when you're shooting the blast weapon, which basically is D3. D3 they have three weapons of D3 yeah, blast, plasma. which means uh, plasma, which is really good. Which means that, uh, and they are plus one to hit with uh, one of the, like a warp smith or something. And then basically, I think that's really important on uh, Iron Warriors. But, and they don't need to move forward. But I think afterwards you need to go heavy, tough um, foot slogging uh, Terminators and maybe possess or something just to keep yourself ahead in order to be able to move forward. But I think the main issue with Iron Warriors currently is that the meta doesn't favor them, basically. No. Uh, and as I said, they're overall, like, compared to what we have on the Codex and we already talked about, it's just lower level. Sorry. It's not. It's just not good enough. In, in, in comparison to what we heard already in this Codex. Yeah. I think it depends how the meta shifts. If the meta shifts towards more, uh, yeah, but, I think, but still, uh, then if you compare, just not 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 against the meta, but what's in the codex? I mean, <laughs> that's the point. No, nah, but I mean, suddenly if you have a lot of vehicle heavy, the Iron Wars is the only kind of shooting army we have in the book. So and good shooting. So I would say that then Iron Wars are becoming more interesting again. Yeah. Um, let's take a, about the last and my favorite legion, um, the Alpha Legion. Oh, Alpha Legion. Yeah, uh, we hope for more, right? Um, they, <sighs> yes. had, they had a lot of good Warlord traits and a lot of good relics previously. They almost kept all the Warlord traits and relics they had before, but they changed it to infantry only. So there is no longer a Disco Lord which can move through walls or stuff like that. And um, they have a lot of good Warlord traits, a lot of good relics still, but reduced to infantry only, most of them. Um, they suffer from being somewhere in between, like being, they excel at nothing, but they are not really shitty, shitty at anything. Like, I mean, that's possibly what Alpha Legion is supposed to be in, in the lore. They're really good in, in, um, in, um, infiltration mission style objectives but um you you barely can bring that on the table and with this book so um they're excellent intelligence and the lore but um that's really hard to put it on the table they have some good stratagems like um you cannot shoot at them when they are not the close unit or within 12 inch the legion trade is the old raven guard rule i think it's um you count as in cover no What's no it? it's a minus one to hit Basically, when you are above 12 or if you are a vehicle or something above 18. Mm. Yeah, but it's, you subtract one from the hit roll when it's more than 12. Yeah, right. yeah. which and is better than the old Raven Cup, which is you gain uh, dense cover. Because yeah, okay. uh, you then can ignore people, cover. Uh, yeah, so this cannot be ignored. It's uh, although Emperor Shielder can ignore it, but you need to be able to ignore hit roll modifiers because this is not cover. This is a hit roll modifier. Yeah, and um, the thing is, the the, the second is trait is is it, what annoys me. Yeah, if you have ten or more wounds, you must be eight away. Away. Yeah. And the second trait is um, you're eligible to perform an action or declare a charge when you fell back which is good um, but in the current meta i don't think you have and based on how the stats are in the army i don't think there's enough units that will survive the first combat in order to fall back and charge yeah like fall back and charge is really really strong and fall back and doing an action is also really really strong if you think about it yeah um, but, but your your units are not durable enough to do that that's the, that's the main and problem and also, um, fall back and charge is something, something I would expect on a melee legion. Yes. And Alpha Legion has possibly better stratagems for staying away. Like it, it doesn't really, it doesn't really synergize. Other the the two 
the two values of your legion trade do not synergize so because the one trade says okay stay away and the other <laughs> says okay charge and fall back and charge <laughs> or do actions so um there are two things that annoy me here you, um, you, you, wait you, you can play like Kaoyon, like stay back first go in then uh, or stuff like that i think there is way but i don't quite see it's not like if you compare it to creations of bile plus one strength plus one move fight on death and then you see okay minus one to hit above 12 inch is okay but yeah so, fall back uh, no, yeah. i don't know that for me if i have to break it down there are two things that annoy me with the alpha legion right um first of all is G gw had the chance to make a really like if you think about in the book you have the as we said the black legion is the overall good and can be shoot your melee how depending on how you build you have the melee armies you have one shooty like iron warriors and which is tanky also uh, and then you have like red corsairs which is board control but aggressive board control with uh, um Alpha Legion, they should have gone and made something like a move shenanigans plus really board control. So, for example, if I was giving them a Legion trait, I would make them pre-game move all the army. Like, that's the infiltration part, right? You can pre-game pre move... Pre-game move even. <laughs> pre uh, no, <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't give them that. I would give them... And I will give the, that uh, the all uh, infantry units in uh, Alpha Legion armies have OPSEC. A what? Sorry? All infantry units in Alpha Legion have OPSEC. Yeah. So th that with a pre-game move, I don't think, because then you don't buff anything to do with their strength. So basically they are not stronger than the other Space Marines Legions, but you have to play around moving. And because you are OPSEC trying to steal objective, which is very Alpha Legion way of playing, right? Mm. So, and I would have also like things like the Night Lords have or like a uh, remove obsec, this kind of, uh, this kind of things. And I will try, I would have tried, I, that's what I would expect Alpha Legion to play, right? Uh, remove obsec, uh, be obsec, um, control objectives, uh, like infiltrate, uh, like okay, let's, put let's... deep strike a unit, for example, with a, yeah. like this kind of things I would expect from yeah, Alpha Legion. Night Lord can do deep strike turn one, for example. Yeah. Um, let's see. Um, the secondary is basically an action you have to do <laughs> uh, when you are wholly within six inch of your opponent's deployment zone and it's completed at the end of the next command phase. Um, in the book, you have basically no unit which will survive until the end of the next command phase in six inch to your opponent's deployment zone. No. Nah. And if, there, you're on a marker, no if, if you're on a marker, you can destroy it and you get um, uh, you can get three to four victory points for each action you make. So um, it's really difficult. Um, if you table the opponent, yes, maybe. But okay, you can you can I don't know shock in maybe raptors and put in put a, put five bikes in front of the raptors and make the raptors okay. They cannot be targeted when they are not the closest enemy unit. Um, but still, then you offer like three hundred points to do the action once. <laughs> so um, I, I I don't know what that's about. Actually, the, the Warlord trait, they have redeploy, they have infiltration, they can pre-game move, actually, as only, like in, in Recover the Relics, they would be the only TSM Legion without the help of uh, demons to get victory points, because they can infiltrate, basically. Yeah. Uh, they have a transhuman to hit, they have a transhuman to wound, I think. Um, they have a couple of good stratagems, like auto-explode for your opponent, or uh, like a Vect. Uh, for a uh, stratagem um, relics are okay but still then there's no like for all the other legions you get an idea of what to play like Empress children you want okay you want uh, chain fist you want uh, noise marines for um, for world eaters you know what to play for um, creations of bile you get r really fast what units will be good when you read the legion trade right and the secondary, but for Alpha Legion, you are kind of lost with okay, what I'm going to play here. What what really makes a difference in this Legion? Like, in my opinion, yeah, not much, nothing. Because I think it's the only Legion in the book that doesn't have an identity, right? 
Like, that's the main point that I was trying to make. There's the, the, all the legions in the book have an identity. You know what units will synergize them with the well, and you the armies you build up around really show the legion itself, right? You have basically, and that's the main point. Alpha Legion doesn't have an identity. Like, it's trying to be <laughs> board control. It does, it's trying to be a board control, but doesn't do that. Be- like, there are better legions that do that better. Like, if but you want, the problem, if, if you play board control, means you push the board, and yeah. you, you certainly lose your legion trade. Yeah. The Which, one exactly. So your legion trade works against what you want to be doing, right? So like yeah, it just it just helps me helps me in the first turn. That's about yeah. it. Yeah. And um I think Kaoyun for Tau, for example, you have the first three turns where you do nothing and then you go in and completely um escalate on exploding force in turn six. You get better the longer the game goes. You could have built Alpha Legion like that a little bit. Yeah, um, but, but, but the, it, it doesn't synergize well. Yeah, no. The, I have a problem with Alpha Legion. I, I don't mind the minus one to hit, but the, the rest of the army doesn't want to be staying back. So basically what... And and like adding a minus one to hit in ranged, in a melee focus basically book, because there is no good enough shooting units, doesn't make also a lot of sense. Like, I mean, may, maybe I, I really... I really have an easy time, an easy time writing lists for creations of violent night lords, and even emperor's children because so intuitive. But Alpha Legion is not intuitive at all. Maybe that's the whole point of the Alpha Legion. But in terms of playing, is um, maybe you should just forget about the minus one to hit and just go mass possessed because they can actually do something with fallback and charge. Yeah, or warp talons for the big game move, and then yeah, but they don't have the durability. No, mostly as a first turn charge. If you get first turn, you yeah, but I'm, I'm talking about fallback and charge. You could you could build around fallback and charge with yeah. bike possessed and terminators, but um, yeah. Also, I'm a bit sad that the minus one to hit for vehicles is uh, for 18 inch, and most of the time in this edition, stuff is closer. Especially if you want to play obliterators, for example, if you would play obliterators you need to get very close and we'll never have them are there infantry right never mind but yeah, yeah. but even then the, their weapons are 24 inches like that's the problem that you don't have like the only unit that can really benefit from that most of the game is like havocs and you don't see so many havocs mm. Uh, like the, the, if you think about it, the rest of the units, the, the shooting is not that uh, we don't have as a CSM book. They don't have so good shooting, right? And the shooting is very mid range compared to other books. Yeah. And again, so, it's mostly a melee focused army. Like, yeah, and, uh, and my point is, I don't think no matter how the meter shifts, I don't think we will see nah. Alpha Legion up there. No, um, uh, th- there needs to be a shift on the how the Legion train works in order to Alpha Legion. Yeah. Um, Want to do a ranking? And then yes, talk let's about do some generics on the codex. So um, yeah. my, my, my tiers would be best is, first of all comes uh, Empress Children with almost the best matchups and the least mismatches. And because of the ability to handle everything, so they are on the very top. Um, Then I would say, uh, for me personally, it is Creations of Battle second. And third third is um, Night Lords on Black Legion. Night Lords maybe on four. I would put uh, third is Black Legion, but uh, with uh, Asterix, you need to, to know how to build a list of Black Legion. Uh, because you need to build are you going melee or are you going shooting yeah and and the fourth one i would say is light lords with word bearers depending on your style yes. of play and I would depending say on the local meta <laughs> and depending on the local meta yes but both have play if you go to an rtt and you know there will be out of 30 players there will be ten thousand sounds you don't bring night lords you no. bring word bearers <laughs> yeah exactly um, we have World Eaters in the Codex, which we will not cover. Um, yeah, then we have uh, still um, Red Causes after that, and then on the comes Iron Warriors, and the latest is Alpha Legion on the very low point. 
I would say I, uh, Red Corsets has the potential, real potential, to be strong in a good, because I think he is, is the most finesse army. You need to know how to use the advance and charge trait, when to advance and charge, when not to advance and charge. And I think it's even more finesse than Night Lords, right? Yeah, but Night Lords have the better secondary. Yeah, but Night Lords have the better secondary, so they win over them. Um, I would say that's, I would say, out. Even Iron Warriors have certain matchups that they are good, and if you bring a good night Iron Warriors list, you may not win the uh, tournament, but you will do well, uh, depending on how you build. I don't see how you can do well with Alpha Legion. Really, I don't see like the effort you need to put to make to do well with Alpha Legion. Yeah, it's not worth it. I agree. <clears throat> So, the codex overall, um, yeah, we talked about every legion now. Um, we played most of them and uh, also most of them on tournaments or competitively. Um, I have a really strong run with um, Creations of Violent Night Lords. You had a long run with uh, Word. Uh, I, play, I played Word Bearers. I did quite well with Word Bearers. I did quite well with Emperor Children also. Um there there are two things in the book that I don't like. First of all is uh, there are a lot of data sheets, right? Um, but basically the book is four or five data sheets. It's Abaddon. Let's talk about Abaddon for a second. Uh, well, there's um, nothing to about his uh, best. I think he's the best yeah. character right now in the in the whole. Um, yes, um, and that's why in the whole forty k. Let, let, let's quickly summarize what Abaddon does for the for the people who, who are not aware of uh, the potential. Um, you can add him in any Chaos um, Legion uh, or any Chaos Army. If he's Supreme Commander, he should be the Warlord and he will get access to the Black Legion stratagems, which can be, for example, um, put him one round in a different Legion trade, which can be Alpha Legion with fallback and charge, which can be Red Causes with advance and charge, which can be um, uh, Fight on Death for Creation of Bile, uh, or plus one strength if you really need it. <laughs> and he can be everything for one turn, but that alone is not the point. Um, he is alone a beat stick on his own. He can pour out mortal wounds on uh, wounding on sixes, I think. He has a tons of attack. He has strength eight, and he's tough to kill. He has a wound cap of three per round. He has all marks and marks of chaos, which makes him accessible to all chaos stratagems. He can ban on a four plus with psychic powers. Um, he will That's ignore human. the we hit transhuman for Nurgle. He will ignore the first damage for Zinch. Uh, he has fight first for Slanesh. And um, that becomes really ridiculous with eight wounds. I think he has toughness six. He has some kind of sort of mini transhuman nine wounds. Rule. Nine, nine wounds. wounds. He has some rule which gives him like mini transhuman, right? If you are yeah, not that's double, the mark of Nurgle. That's the mark of Nurgle. Yeah, that's the mark of Nurgle. And he costs three hundred sixty points. <laughs> three hundred points. Three hundred points. Um, he alone. He, he 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 cannot be targeted, so he is a lot tougher to kill than Belakor. And um, he cannot be seen like Belakor, and yeah. he, he hits harder than Belakor, and is more independent. And if you play him with Black Legion, he really excels in buffing as well. So, um, in my opinion, it is a 420 point data sheet on a cost of 300 points. He should be 100 points more expensive. And um, you see him for a reason in every army. The only thing he does is he denies you the secondaries uh, for your legions. Like the most of the legion secondaries are bound to okay. If a black, if a if a night lord unit kills something in melee, or if uh, if a Fabius of bile, uh, if if a creations of bile unit kills something, he will not do that for you. Um, but he can handle a flank alone. He can handle the toughest enemy units alone basically and he requires a lot to be killed indeed i think um he's definitely going up in points and i think i don't like him i i like him like i i run him in like in member children i run him he's kind of necessary but i don't like that we have a data sheet that is so auto include, auto -include yeah. 
For, for um, me, he no longer is. I, I try to build my list without him because I expect him to go 100 points up. Yeah. And I think he should lose. I, I don't like that you can play him in all Chaos Legions. That is stupid, in my opinion. Um, you should be able to play him in all Chaos Space Moon Legions. And I think you should get some. Um, you should lose something if you put him in other Legions. Not only. You know what I mean? He should yes, not I know be like I mean. that kind of auto include. I think if you put him to 380, 400 points, I think most legions will drop him, even Emperor Children, because then it becomes too expensive for what he does. He should be for, uh, uh, like considering the rest of the army, which is also yeah. not. He should be like 400 to 410 to 15 points. I, th I think uh, I would say if he goes above 400, uh, the book is you become your army becomes too elite. And you're basically you cannot play the game afterwards because you you are not that strong. Like you're you're not that durable to be that kind of elite army. Yeah, th then they should bring down uh, the point cost of other units a little bit. Yes, more. I, I would I would prefer if they pushed Abaddon to four twenty points, but then dropped certain units down. For example, I don't see why Legionnaires should be. Um, I'm okay with the cost of legionnaires as long, but then you add all the marks on top, which is kind of you need them to make them function. So and they go to 120, 125 points. I'm not happy with that. Like I would like to see more legionnaires in the. I think that they are a good data sheet, but they are a bit. If you pay 120 to 125 points for a for unit of five, it's not that good. I would like to see. There are a lot of changes I would like to see, basically, in the book in order yeah, or, to make it. Or Abaddon, Abaddon should, or I mean, Obliterators, 90 points for one model. For, no, no. The Obliterators need to go down in points. Their weapons are not even that good. E even, so, even, uh, even, even Assault Centurions cost 60 points, I think, but 90 and points they are for better. one model. And they are better than Obliterators. Yeah. Um, another point is Abaddon, maybe they should tune down his marks. Uh, maybe he should get um, not like Zin. It gets too complicated then, but he shouldn't ignore the first. He's already tough he, to wound. And then I he, think you cannot avoid that. Uh, they would have to rework the whole marks because then it would be strange that his mark of Zinch work differently than the other marks of Zinch. Yeah, that's true. But then make him 100 points marks and pencil. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would say that they will. He will go to 380 to 400 points for sure. That. Yeah, and that um, will drop him from most lists because 400 points, like it's not worth the investment. Yeah, basically, or, or, or give him, or or make him um, give a melee if you uh, like him, give a negative impact if you include him in other legions. Something like maybe you don't get the patrol detachment cost back, something like that. Yeah, like, like that. you don't like that, something like that. You lose the CP, which will be okay. Or you or you pay a CP extra for him. Or you pay one extra CP, like oh. his warlord trade warlord costs. Like two. to to get his warlord trade, you need to pay two CP instead of one for example. Oh, yeah, so like like reward charges and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I I would say in general, Abaddon is the auto include. But yes. I, if I have to say one thing about the book, is the weirdness with the mark and icons. I think it's very clunky how it works. I find it strange that Chosen, for example, can get Mark and Icon, but Terminators cannot get Mark and Icon. Uh, they can Posesca, get a Mark, but not Icon. Uh, yeah. And the, on the other hand, Possess can get an Icon, but not Mark, which is really weird. Yeah. I think why they, do they, uh, they doesn't make any sense? It, I, I think they planned it otherwise, but they then they saw certain combinations were possible, and then they just came up with this weird solution. <laughs> And also, it doesn't make sense from the profiles because if you, they gave them the like the, the AP two damage two in a weapon of a possessed right now it requires a mark of corn with the icon of corn to get to the AP three because of the armor of contempt that is everywhere. I think armor of contempt will go away soon. Uh, uh, until the new book of uh, Space Marines out, I don't think it will go anywhere soon because of the whole uh, too much AP everywhere. Yeah. Anyway, um, also we have um, in the book the difference between core and demonkin. Yeah. Um, I found it really difficult to either you go one or the other. Yeah. Um, the only list where I really 
don't care about it. It's Night Lords actually where I combine all of them. Just I, I in Night Lords I just care about my fearsome and a combination of fearsome and good amount of attacks. Uh, nothing else matters for me. But uh, in the most legions, you will want to go either Core or either Demonkin. I don't like that actually. Uh, I like a split on the book. It I'm makes sense. okay with that. I'm okay with that because, but I would like, for example, more dim. Like the main problem with that is. You don't have enough units that buff Demon Kin, right? Like the Demon Kin keyword, uh, except if you play War Bears where they do things with Demon Kin, most of the other strategies and everything don't do things with Demon Kin. That's my, my main problem with that. Yeah. Is that, for example, you should have, for example, Demon Priests, which is kind of a Demon Kin themselves, should buff Demon Kin, for example. So you can build a, a Demon Kin army, if you want, like Demon Prince with a Master of Possession with a lot of Possess and everything. And you can build a core infantry army like with Chosen and with, uh, and you should be able to, to be able to buff equally, right? The main yeah. problem with Demon Kin is, first of all, there are only three data sheets, I think, that are Demon Kin, which is basically Possessed, Warp Talents, and uh, Obliterators. Master of Possession, yeah. A master of Possession, but Master of Possession can buff, I don't really consider him Demon King because he can buff both Core and Demon King units, you know what I mean? Yeah. But eventually... And I would expect it something like that for certain other units, like Demon Princes, that should be able to... Demon Prince should have the Demon King keyword, and also that he can buff both uh, Core and Demon King, for example. I would expect something like that. Um, it's a bit weird. I I want to see more, to be honest, moving forward in uh, in Chaos Space Marines, I would like to see more Demon King units and them to become a really valid way of playing the book because I really like that way of, uh, the, like, from the lore and everything. I really enjoy that kind of, like, the merger of human and demon. And I think they, they should uh, try to do more with the Demonkins in general. Okay. Yeah, I agree. Um, one thing um, I said, yeah, there's a possibility to mix with Chaos Demons, which in Night Lords is a must, in my opinion. Um, but for other factions, for other legions, not so much. Uh, what I would like to add is um, let's finalize it with our top choices in the respective um, categories of units, and then we take a look at the uh, World Eaters yeah. um, leagues. So uh, in the HQ slot, also like okay, Abaddon is Supreme Commander or HQ must take in the most legions right now, uh, even if I don't like it, but he is just too good to almost not play him so we will keep him out so in the hq slot we got uh my other favorite would be the master of possession um because he has the warp loki and if you combine with uh, demons you can actually deep strike demons in six inch around him and six inch uh range to the opponent so you can actually um, use his mark um to bring in demonets or whatever mark you will give him um, which is nice, but he, as you said, he can buff Demonkin and he can buff normal use. Uh, he has a ritual dagger, which has a lot of uh, you do mortal wounds on a friendly unit, and then you can heal units. So uh, there is a certain play with uh, different um, armies to get uh, shorter charges out of deep strike or whatsoever. So yeah. uh, master, master of possession for me is an uh, ab absolute top tier unit in the codex. Uh, do you have any other HQ which is good? I would say the Demon Prince and Lord Discordon are your yeah. bit stick generic let, let's characters. Say, let's say not Demon Prince and Lord of Discordon, let's say Demon Prince or, or Lord of Discordon. Yeah, <laughs> you always have space for one of the two and you yes. choose what to bring. I think they are, they are comparable. I like the Demon Prince because it gives me access to Psychic Secondaries because uh, he's a Psyker. Mm. but there is also a, a case to be made for a good Lord Discordant, right? Yes. Um, I and always end up with the Demon Prince for two reasons. Uh, one reason you said already, it opens up for Psychic Secondaries, because you don't want to use your Master of Possession for that. And he, if you play him with Wings, he has Fly, and he has a smaller base. Means you can play him a lot more 
freely than a disco lord. Uh, the disco lord has a very big base and you have to move him through the terrain. Here in Germany we have a very terrain heavy um, tournament. Uh, WTC standards almost and then uh, you really benefit from fly because you can move over stuff you can move over ruins and stuff like that and just bring him where you as a I, I really always manage to place my demon print in the battle but I rarely against good opponents you can have a hard time placing your uh, disco lord I agree and that's why I prefer also demon princes usually plus they are cooler <laughs> Okay, so we have that three HQ slots. Uh, uh, and I would say uh, the last one HQ is the Dark Apostle because of the prayers. Yeah, I almost leave him out uh, in my latest list. But yeah, he's good too. But he's I, think not- the, I think depending on the prayer, because there are people don't use some of the prayers that are really good. Like people tend to go to the Illusionary's application, but you have also a prayer to give plus one to wound. Uh, you have things yeah. like that. You have even a prayer to make fight last, which people yeah. don't use. Uh, and I think for that one, if I can give you an advice, you should look at for Night Lords because you can make a unit fight last if you roll above their leadership. Yep. Which is very Night Lords uh, prayer, prayers themed one. Yeah, that's nice. Um, okay, but yeah, we have a lot of good HQ slots. For troop choices, um, it is really down to cultists. Um in one regard that legionaries become really expensive with the marks um if you put marks if you, if not there will be just holding objectives and then you can take cultists anyway um if you play i think if you play the uh, empress children or world eaters for example you will have very good troop slots with noise marines which are excellent or even combat circus with obsec are crazy good um but generally speaking you will end up with cultists on the troop slot yeah i agree like, except yeah, for uh, empress children and also if you play world eaters with corn berserkers i think yeah but world eaters are basically getting the codex yeah. in one month so yeah so um, i wouldn't i wouldn't play uh, like if i was playing other lists usually I don't bring any troops right now legionaries no. i don't no i maybe bring one squad of legionaries if i have some points over but usually i would go cultist um elite slot i would say um yeah i think we can add terminators i think it's the standard Term- Terminators who may not like the big blob, but they do the job. Let's yeah. be honest. They do what they, they are supposed to. Chosen in certain legions are good. In certain legions, they are not good, depending, again, how you build them. I think Chosen need a rhino. Yeah, Chosen need a rhino. And um, Possessed. That's it, the elites, I would say. Possessed, yeah. They are good. So that's three really good choices. Uh, you can play them all, I think. There's... Uh, depending on your style, on your list, and on your legion. Um, then we have the fast attack slot, which for me is... Oh, um, we should not forget Master of Execution. Is also oh yeah, good. Master of Execution is another character. In Night Lords, he's really good. Uh, in other legions, maybe too. But you have to play him carefully because he has no invulnerable save. And uh, I have seen a lot of games where he didn't make... For, for the point cost he has, he is extremely good profile. But in terms of usage in game and in game value, most likely he tends to disappoint, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. He has an extremely good data sheet and he will smack most units he will hit. But um, in terms of value for your game, for your secondaries, for your play, uh, he will not add much to your. Um, with Night Lord, you can really build a really cool one, um, which also does something in shooting. But. Um, with a model wound pistol and a waller trail and you can do stuff um but um usually he will not he will not add much value to your secondary play and mission play but he's I mean, good he's, he's good in ember children also because of the six years heroical intervention for the yes. with the model of traitors to give them uh, to <coughs> fight last so it's really good also in ember yeah. children but so Night Lords and Empress Children, he, he is good, but in the rest, he's still a good data sheet for the point, is excellent, but as I said, um, I think uh, play style wise and the value for the game, it's not there. Yeah, um, I agree. Fast Attack, um, it's one of the things in the Codex which annoys me. The fa- 
usually you want to have four or five fast attack slots possibly and uh, the codex really lacks combat squads in my opinion um, because warp talents are really good even though they are not core and have no mark but um, they have a holy load of attacks and jump packs and but um, you also want to have raptors for having fearsome in some legions or to have um, action monkeys for um, nephilim data I always use them for Nephilim data. I use six Raptors with Mark of Siege. So they come, do Nephilim data. They have still 25 mil base. They can do it almost in every game. So I almost have always uh, eight points of Nephilim data safe with them. And with Mark of Siege, they also ignore the first wound. So the opponent really has to care about them or they will do um, Nephilim data twice even. And uh, the bikes are really good as well with, for example, Creations of Bile. But if I could, I would play like three squads of uh, warp talents and two squads of six um, raptors. But you have not ma- enough faster deck slots. Yeah, I think the f- even even the um, the the addition of a venom crawler fast attack makes it even worse because I would like yeah. to be able to bring one venom crawler at least because the plus one to the psychic is really important if you go for psychic actions also, and they are a unit that is not easy to shift, and it's kind of a a unit that is basically good by itself, and it costs nothing, yeah. but. Um, with the fast attack uh, positions always filled with warp talons, bikers, it's always difficult to figure out. And then you have also the spawn there, which you also want to bring one or two spawns. Yeah. The chaos spawn is an excellent unit for, um, it might so, um, look weird because it's 25 points by model. If you bring two and they have an ability which uh, if you don't kill them on the shot, they will heal. So yeah. anything but mortal wounds, they will heal up uh, after the um, attacking units is finished and you didn't kill it and uh, you can use it perfectly to catch mortal wounds from zone tropes or from thousand suns yeah and also and to, to or to hold or to or to screen or to hold a back objective it's really a very good unit all around unit to have one or two spawns but with the slots it's you have to decide what to bring or not even like I was thinking dreadclaw drop it uh, from the false world, that's also a fast attack choice. Yeah. So um, fast attack, um, <laughs> it's it's really sad, but uh, actually you want to have at least four fast attack slots and you have to make decisions here. Um, but it's good that we have so much good options. Yeah. Um, I think that, that's also a, thing, a rare thing about this codex is you have a lot of good options on a good, on every slot almost, except heavy maybe. But you lack the slots <laughs> and you lack the CP to, to fill detachments. Yeah. And then on heavy, we can move on. <laughs> I think Havocs on um, Emperor's Children. Yeah. I mean, you have better shooting with your... Uh, like, I prefer to bring one extra troop of uh, Noise Marines than invest in a unit of uh, Havocs. Yeah. Um. I mean, with Emperor's Children, you could even bring in direct uh, like Whirlwind Scorpius because you don't get a melee. Um, no, you you know. No, no, I ignore heat roll modifiers, not ballistic skill modifiers, and, and that's a ballistic, ballistic, ballistic skill. skill. No, not ballistic skill. Heat roll modifiers. Uh, so I get the minus one to my ballistic. Let me check skill. that. Let me check. That. I'm not sure. Yeah. What else do we have on fast attack? Meanwhile, I'm looking. Fast attack, I think we covered it. Uh, I mean heavy. Uh, heavy, we have uh, all the demon engines, oh, like uh, Forge uh, Fiends and the Mal- sorry. Malor Fiends. Sorry, you ignore all hit roll, weapon yeah. skill, and ballistic skill modifiers. Okay, I ignore that. But still, I wouldn't bring a Whirlwind Swap. It's too expensive. I, I just say you would hit indirect shooting on threes. Yeah, but still. Yeah, he, he has minus two only and two damage, which is bad right now, but still. Yeah. I would still not bring one for 200 points almost. Yeah, and it's so expensive and costs one CP. <laughs> and costs one CP, which is like, forget it. Heavy, you have Forge Fiends and Molar Fiends, which are good in certain legions, but uh, that's 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 it. Like, Iron Warnish would be, would be good. Big for, for, yeah, too big bases. Yeah, too big bases. I think the Hellrack has certain place. Yeah, in certain legions, but... 
Not in many. And there's one thing, I think there are two generic relics we should uh, add to the list. Yeah. And, uh, it is, um, for me, a top relic is the demon weapon of Nurgle, which every hit is an auto wound. Yes, and ignores any wound caps, basically. Yes, and, which is and crazy. Up on, on, yes. It's crazy on a demon prince or disco lord. If you yeah. go for a knight and make, okay, I auto hit you. It's not restricted to titanic or whatever. You can hit a wall or titan and immediately wound it. <laughs> crazy yeah. good. And the second yeah. one uh, is Black Rune of Damnation, I think, right? Or yeah, Mantle of Traitors. Uh, uh, I would say Mantle of Traitors only for Emperor's Children. Black Rune of Damnation for every legion. Like... You always bring it in one unit, for Can sure. Can you explain what it does? The Black Rune of Damnation does two things. First of all, it's minus one to wound for that unit, which is really good. Uh, basically, it means like if you put the unit of Possess, which is Toughness 5, Strength 8 weapons, wound them on 4s, basically. Strength uh, anything less than that, wound them on 5s, uh, or anything uh, like Strength 5 weapons and below, wound them on 5s and 6s. Yeah. So, which is really good. And then you have uh, also an addition. Any uh, psyche within, uh, I think, 20, 18 inches of it or 24, I don't remember the exact range, it, uh, have perils of the warp in a double roll, which is really good against psychic armories, like, yes. uh, which they do a lot of powers. That's the potential to spike really hard. Okay. I think that was uh, that was <laughs> the hell boot. <laughs> that was it in regard of the codex, right? I think yeah. um, the book has a lot of different play styles covered. Uh, it has its weaknesses and secondaries, and um, too little faster text loads, and it's all very CP intense armies. But I think um, there's it's one of the few books where it's not obvious how the list will look Indeed. like if you see sisters you know what's going to come if you see thousand sons you exactly know what what the list is going to be almost and yeah there are similarities on almost the list but uh, you can vary a lot um depending on your play style yes and um i think the codex has enough power to stay until the new wave of 10th edition codex will drop so i think uh, this codex will still have a long play in this edition and still can handle the new codexes and um it's a solid codex i like it i would say you because you have all these legions and you can pivot between them i think you have a long long legs it depends what they do with the balance that i slate towards Abaddon and towards Emperor's Children and towards the creation of Bile. And then we will see after that and, and the points. I, th I think the fact that creations of Bile have such hard mismatches and the win ratio is not high enough to punish them for their excellent warlord, um, um, for their excellent uh, legion trade, because fight on death is just too strong in my opinion. It is. face-to-face -face melee armies, you, you will lose any game against an equal opponent. If he has fight on death, you cannot trade better. Yeah, it's crazy. The, the only thing you have to worry about that is if you really play against a really tanky opponent that can really take a hit back. Yeah. And the, the, like, and there black, are armies. black templars. Black templars, I could imagine, can take hits back. Uh, like if you play Iron Warrior, melee yeah. focused army also can take the hit. Imagine making them your possessed that charge into a unit of, uh, or if a unit of um, Terminator charges a unit of possessed, and you make the the suddenly the Terminator's minus one damage. Basically, yeah. you you are minus one at that moment, one damage weapon. It won't mm -hmm. do much on the Terminators, for example. So you have armies that can take the hit. Or, for example, like uh, if you play against Tau, you charge them into a unit of um, crisis suits, they won't do much. <laughs> That's right. Anyway. So, I think so it depends. I would say it depends a lot on the, what will happen with the balance of the athlete. In, but I would say uh, almost a month. For all armies, <laughs> not only in, for Chaos. No. It depends, but I would like to say also it will play, depend also what happens with the secondaries, right? 
uh, and then we will have to see which legions can play the secondary game yeah. better than I the mean, others. I mean, Alpha Legion could immediately be really good if they have a really good secondary. So that's about all, all this edition is about. Who has the better secondaries? Um, yeah, if suddenly we get secondaries like the Necrons, Necrons then uh, uh, yeah, or suddenly, uh, to make it worse. Yeah. Anyway, um, let's take the last 10 minutes to talk about World Eaters. Um, I'm building World Eaters in pre-heresy scheme, waiting for the releases. We have seen Angron, um, we have seen Juggernaut, and we have seen some kind of corn possessed, the yeah. eight bound. And we have seen datasheet leaks and point leaks, and I'm really disappointed to have not seen red butchers somewhere in the data sheets what's going on what the heck i'm not that disappointed i i in the initially i was disappointed of course i would like to see a red butcher's data sheet because but to be honest i prefer to see new units if they are not going to do a big release like the death guard which i'm a bit i would say disappointed of that Although I have a feeling that we've seen half of the leaks, half of the book will be released now, and the other half will be released with tenth, uh, tenth yeah. as they have I, done, and like it looks, um, both are like they have done the same with Admech, and they have done the same with Sisters. In Age of Sigma, they have done well, the same with Slave to Darkness, and they have done the same with lumineth and they have done it with a lot of armies yeah. but admesh had the range before but here uh, the range is re I, I i already dislike thousand suns i have thousand suns but compared to death guard the range is very limited and the rules even supported on a thousand suns so in thousand suns if you see a competitive army before chaos demons dropped it was excluding the characters it was just two data sheet army yeah exactly and it shouldn't be it's no, it's, it's no point uh, 20 terminators whereas root marines and the characters which are all the same anyway so um, it's like a two data sheet army and uh, if you see death guard they have a wider variation two, two types of terminators which is not necessary but they have the drones they have uh, even black bus quarters which are on their own very interesting and then I, you see I, word, and word eaters I was quite disappointing to see Combat is like, okay, we expect it. Yeah. Uh, the Juggernaut of Corn is cool. But we I don't would have expected a unit like well, I actually should. I'm more disappointed, not a unit of bikers, a unit of berserkers on juggernauts. Uh, actually I'm more disappointed than, of that than with uh, like a new kit for Terminators. Because like okay, the Terminators are not out, but there, I have so many kits in uh, Terminators right now from Games Workshop. Like you have the Horus Heresy Terminators, like two different kits. You have the Tartarus Terminators, the Cataphracty. You have the generic Chaos Space Marine Terminators, and you can buy the 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 Terminators from uh, and kit, uh, yeah Deathwing, and you can kit bash and make whatever Terminator you want. So I'm not that worried about the Terminators. I, I'm not caring about the data sheet, but yeah, uh, I mean, I'm uh, about the model. I'm caring about the data sheet. I want yeah. I want red butchers as a profile. I don't care how they look, but I want them. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm more like, but that we don't know yet. Maybe it will be an upgrade. Maybe it will be like a point upgrade, or maybe it will be like a, a CP upgrade, like a stratagem upgrade. We we have to see. We don't know yet. And uh, I I'm, I'm more disappointed that I didn't see a fast attack unit like juggernauts on uh, corn corn berserkers on juggernauts, or even oh, simply anti bikes. Or Christ. fancy bikes, or even just juggernauts going in like a demon engine, uh, like a smaller demon engine. That will be also cool, right? Yeah, I I, I also miss um, generic drop pods on them because um, I miss that in all cow space material armies. I would say I would love yeah, to have drop pods. Yeah, but World were the first to example the uh, to to try the um, dreadclaw drop pods. Well, dreadclaw drop pod, I think you will be able to use from Forge World. Yeah, but maybe they could have owned robots or um, I don't know. Like in terms of, I'm a really bit. I'm I would. I, I'm concerned. I would have liked to see one or two fast attack choices. Yes, I would like, to, and that's my main concern of the book. And that right now, it, it's foot slogging army. Yeah, it seems I like see, a foot slogging I, army. 
I, I, th I see the eight bound, which are eight blood letters in one Chaos Space Marine, which could be really funny. And I don't know if they are on 40 mil bases, like they have their own possessed, but it's a foot slogging melee army, which has no shooting, not even artillery, nor. Um, I, I'm really concerned how they will be. I think if they it don't get. Depends on like, the rules. It depends, it depends on the rules, like if they get advanced and charge, fall back and charge, and you don't know their rules yet, but but still I'm I'm really concerned about a monotone a really, really monotone style. I'm I'm actually I would like to see a short range shooting unit. I would have liked to see a short range shooting unit. Like I don't care about the kit. Like they could have, for example, the berserker unit, you can say you can build it as a berserker, like as a as a shooting berserker unit, which is basically with a lot of assault Scar weapons, Scar shotguns, <laughs> something like make something right, and that they, they need to be in short range, of course. But with rhinos, you can achieve that. Or like they are missing a uh, like even to creation. be really pathetic throwing axes, whatever on twelve inch or I like. Inch. We we are playing a game where where you have uh, like uh, guys with spears on a, and a grenade on the top that they do amazing damage so i don't care about that to be honest what it is just give them something right some uh, like 18 inch range attack something like that in order to be able to compete against ranged armies before they reach the only, the only way to make them compete against range armies in the current how the, it seems the codex is coming is to buff up their movement yeah, the no, way. no, no Overwatch fight on death. Not even fight on death. No Overwatch advance and charge. Um, disembarking after moving from a transport and still charge. Um, uh, I would, would like to that. see a stratagem for fight and death, for example, or for this eight bond to fight on death. Because to fight be honest, twice they will have. Yeah. I don't want fight twice because that will. I would prefer fight on death. Uh, fight twice. I think it's usually they would kill most things in the first turn of combat. Like, I don't okay. want to see fight twice. I don't think it has a place in this current edition. Like, the way combat is right now, I don't think fight twice has a place. If if they could fight units they didn't charge, then yes. Yes, but right now you cannot. So I would prefer if they had fight on death to get around a lot of the fight lasts because Korn doesn't have fight first. So, for example, if your if you're eight bound, for example, can fight on death, then it become interesting again, right? Mm -hmm. Or if uh, you're they, basic, or if they have like, uh, for example, you kill a model that unit moves forward, for example, some some rules like that, right? Mm, the problem I see they uh, same like Black Templars. Um, with Black Templars, we have our own litanies because we don't have psychers. Um, I expect or I hoped for. World Eaters to have uh, some kind of special apostle, skull apostle or whatever, um, to make him basically yeah, do prayers or prayers of brotherhood or whatsoever. Prayers um, of blood. Play, prayers of blood, yes. And also um, another point is a master of executions went to an HQ slot, which I question. I question um, also. It's a bit weird to move a, a, a data sheet from an elite that is in one book with the same name. I would assume exactly the same everything to an yes. HQ slot. I, that's that's a bit weird, and also it's especially weird. With, uh, especially because the elite slot is since Combrazakas are troops, the elite slot is not really overloaded. But you, I think you will have issues. Um, I think you want more HQs than you have slots in a battalion. That's my concern. And and I find we are like I'm. Uh, I would say that the leak could be true halfway because they are also missing points for Chaos Lord, uh, generic Chaos Lord and Chaos Lord Terminator armor, which is really weird if you think about it. When even Death Guard has a normal Chaos Lord, which they don't need it because they have five different lords, right? But here you are missing lords. Actually, the only foot lord is basically Karn, and that's a bit weird in the leaks. Yeah, I mean, and then we have Angron, a Primark model. Three sixty points for Angron. <laughs> That's a cheap Angron. If it's yeah, three sixty I mean, points, I mean, if he has roots like Magnus, they can just leave him out. 
<laughs> um, Magnus, I mean, we tried Magnus right off camera. I don't think we did a report on that, but Magnus right now is just... It's not worth it. it it's the definition of sadness in this game right now. It, it's really embarrassing to play Magnus because if you don't pull out your... Like, he can be shot in turn one. Um, yeah. Like, his durability is a joke compared to, to Mortarion. Um, his buff is a joke compared to... Motarion or debuff, let's say that. And um, he can excel in melee, but still then he has no swipe, so he can really dump in a couple of cultists if, if, if it goes bad. <laughs> so, so um, like, over you say, but um, yeah, I hope Angron will not be that. Um, Angron needs to be the best melee unit in the game, period. Yeah. Like, if Angron attacks anything in combat, that thing dies. Period. Yeah. There is no, there is there, no. There like, cannot be any argument against that. Like, so Angron, Angron needs I, like strength twenty. <laughs> no, Angron doesn't need uh, that much strength. Strength sixteen is okay, but I mean, what he needs is basically ignore invans and feel no pains and uh, wound caps. Basically, no, ig ignore, wound uh, ca ignore wound caps or ignore invuls, not both at the same time. Like, like you can no, switch no. the weapons. Yeah. I, 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 I would say that based on the weapons, one weapon should be ignore wound caps, the other weapon should be ignore invans, and you choose which weapon you want to use. Basically. Yeah, and one has a swipe as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, both should have swipe. I would say both needs to have both swipes yep. and strikes. It's just that the, the effect of the weapon is different. One is um, ignore wound caps, the other is ignore invans. So you choose what you attack with. Yeah, and, and he needs to feel no pain against mortal wounds because otherwise the army will uh, he will just get wrecked. Uh, well, that depends on like because most of the psychic powers are targeted right now. Like, uh, yeah, I yeah. would say maybe with a stratagem. Or just a uh, normal feel no pain. Um, depends on what other protections he has. Uh, yes. We need to see. We haven't seen his data sheet because you don't want to make him unkillable. Also, I mean, because he I'm, I'm, yeah, I mean, in my opinion, every big model which can be, I, I don't like the current state of models with more than eighteen wounds, sixteen wounds that you can always see and target them. Uh, yeah regarding true line still but um i don't think that a model for 400 points should be blown off the table because you can see his wings yeah um I agree with that. shooting army so i think every big model for 300 plus 350 plus points should have wound cap even if it's eight wounds per phase so yeah. you need at least two phases to kill him i agree uh, and I, for, uh, for, like if a, if a, like a, like the bloodthirster, you should be able to have that. Mortarion needs a wound yeah. cap. Uh, like they need to be able to be killed in three phases. That's yeah, it. Mortarion doesn't need it because um, he he is already minus one damage and has a feel no pain. Yeah, exactly. But uh, I would say and toughness eight. Magnus definitely needs it. Magnus needs uh, all, all Magnus need would be a three up for one phase, like the Waller trade. Well, if, then, if you have, you start, then you have then you have all the shooting that ignores in one, so yeah, still. <laughs> so right. he would die, <laughs> and a lot of armies have shooting now that ignore in ones. Uh, yeah. Astra Militarum have that, um, uh, Tau uh, have it, and Votan have it. So basically, yeah, yeah so, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, but um, I think the Bloodthirst is a very good example of demons because he's good, but he's not over the top. You can no. still deal with him because it's one model. With, he, he, if if he hits, he hits. But um, you can calculate him and you can deal him and you can screen him out and stuff like that. Yeah. And you can reduce him to. He will do damage, but uh, he is not like uh, auto include win uh, win the game because he is yes. not uh, taking more than eight wounds. But so if, if 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 you put like wound caps. It's like oh, we put armor of contempt, and then suddenly four months later, every unit in the game has one AP more, so it's no vomit; it never gets there. <laughs> because um, if you put a wound cap on him, and then suddenly every third army or every army has a way to go around wound caps, it doesn't make sense anymore. So it needs no, a good balance. For me, uh, every army should have uh, ignored wound caps, like, but then it should be a character that has a weapon, a relic. So you, yes. yeah, so not, you, not an army like uh, wide ignore wound caps. No, like 
if it's like for example look at the the fly in uh, the flying tyrant in uh, um, with uh, the relics the obliterax relics right it ignores wound caps the demon priest ignored wound caps even in uh, Votan book there is a way to ignore wound caps but that's on characters and with specific builds and I think that's okay because it's not oppressive because it's an investment you have to make as an army right buy relics buy warlord tricks and set up a character to ignore wound caps and it and because it's a character and maybe it's not as strong as the other it may die before it can use that so I would say that um, it's a way to do it uh, if you want it, and then you can have. And then you have also. I think if you think about it, you have realistic battles in the like. You want your character that is basically this big character killer to go against the other character, and that will be very cinematic on the tabletop, right? Yeah, I agree. I think tenth edition will will go some. I, I it's my it's my I, I think we can end this part because we are almost on two hours now so we yeah. should end with our wishes um generally speaking for the whole game i wish um to be a bit more thinned down again i think um a good way would be to reduce the stratagem to a certain amount not so much because know your army gets more and more complicated. I really like the uh, reactions of Horus Heresy. Maybe there could be uh, a reaction mechanic um, for every legion or faction specific um, and generic ones. And then maybe one to five or six stratagems per faction at maximum. Um, that would be my wish for... 10th edition, but in general for chaos basements, because we are talking about chaos, it's um, what if I could have wishes for the codex uh, or for the next um, data slate, I would wish to go um, Abaddon being more expensive or um, having penalties like um, spending command points for having him in a non black legion uh, or uh, let, make him more expensive. Um, I would wish for combat squads if I could because that would make the fast attack slot, which is overwhelmed with good choices, a bit more easier to handle. Like um, if you could put, um, for example, 10 warp talents and combat squad them, and then you would win one fast attack slot, basically, where you could put a spawn or a spider, uh, I mean venom crawler, or same counts for raptors. And I would wish for a bit more... Um, um, rework of the secondaries because it's still a good book um, they shouldn't be too easy there should no and in the whole game there should not be a how to include secondary which gives you 15 points after three or two rounds of playing without having interaction with your opponent like uh, sisters or necrons can do well necrons don't do much more because their data sheets and point cost doesn't allow them to but um, I, I, I wish they would make the secondaries of I feel like the secondaries of, of um, Chaos Space Marines are a little bit pre-Nephilim like, like the actions for Iron Warriors and for Alpha Legion for example uh, are ending in your next command phase where the actions of Necrons with the new Nephilim um, FAQ basically finish um, when you have OPSEC in your phase which actually makes them playable because rarely any unit survives until the next round. Especially if you do actions in No Man's Land or next to the enemy deployment zone. It's not going to happen. They will not survive. So I hope they will tweak a little bit on the objectives that they are finished in their own turn and then suddenly Iron Warriors and Alpha Legion can have a play. Yeah, that's my wishes. From my side, I would say if we put it on my wishes for the balance of the data slate and the next chapter approved before 10th edition, because I think the rumors are that 10th edition is coming this summer, uh, I would say is that go away from faction specific secondaries, make them one per faction, max, maximum one per faction. I don't care if they have sub factions or anything, give them one per faction that you can use and limit them and then make a lot more of the generic ones like a lot of the, the secondaries that work for factions make them generic ones basically uh, so that every every army can play them if they want to um, on the 
I, w- I would say right now on the book of CSM, I'm okay with it. Like, I would like to see the re- a bit revamping what units can take Mark and what units can take Icons to make a bit more common sense. But that's it. And if we look at Death Edition, I agree with you. I would like to see more reactions. And if I would add to that, I would like to see also, like, I don't mind if you have a lot of strategies, but then you can you could build a deck that you can play with uh, in the, like when you build your army, you build a deck of uh, stratagems that you bring with. And I would say that you put a cap on how many stratagems you can use based on how many characters you have per phase. So for example, if you have three characters, you can only use three stratagems per phase and you can not use more than one stratagem per unit. And I would like to see, as you said, the reaction stratagem in the 10th edition, the reaction oh. mechanism. But, um, but, but in order to avoid the... Uh, over buffing units, we really like playing three strategies. Suddenly, the output of a small unit that costs nothing becomes crazy. Only one strategy per unit, period. And uh, what I would like to see is um, there are a lot of generic uh, relics in the, all the books, not only Chaos Space Marines, um, like also Black Templars or Space Marines. Like, you know, this weapon replacements like pistols. Yeah. Or uh, an axe here and there. Like, with the current, I like the fact that we have less cp than before because it yeah. was too much but now like even before with 12 cp you wouldn't spend cp on such a weapon replacement if you could buy it for points like in black templars you know you can upgrade yeah. your fist for 10 points if you could do that generically for all the weapon replacement relics it would be awesome because you yeah. could go a bit more towards hero hammer i agree with that and i actually think that points is the we have 2,000 points, so if you want to spend 200 points on relics and warlord race, 300 points, you end up with some really good characters, but you end up with less units on the board. So it's up to you to decide that, right? And also it gives you granularity, like, because you don't see certain relics, right? Why would I take this relic when I take that relic that does 10 times more than that one and basically cost me the same? So if, for example, you have a crazy relic and then you can have a crazy wall of trade that costs 50 points, 60 points, fine. Yeah, and but then you have a pistol that costs 5 points an upgrade, right? So you yeah. may take the pistol upgrades whenever you want to. And don't forget, you would have CP over for uh, adding another detachment for fast attack slots, yeah. for example, or such. Yeah, exactly. So, so I would it, say... It, it would make list building a lot more open and bring a lot more variety without unbalancing the game in my opinion yeah because basically you are removing units in order to take those relics basically you are removing models in order to take those relics which is a good trade-off in my opinion much better than the current situation with the cp and you can upgrade them as you want and you can build up characters as you want and you don't have any limitations so you can build up as many as you want so if you want to play hero hammer you can play hero hammer if you want to bring an army with minimum relics and you can bring a lot more models, you can play that. And that allows people to play as they want. I would like to say that this will be amazing, right? If, if they make yeah. that, if, that, if that, that change only is made, I think that will change a lot the game. Yeah, I think and it would, would not be over the top. Yeah. Anyway, I think we talked for about more than two hours. <laughs> yeah, it was a long one. Yeah, but I think um, we had a lot to talk about and it's a deep codex and um, it was like a mix of codex review and analysis after I think we both played over. I mean, I alone played, I think, oh God, 20 games, Creations of Bile, 12 to 13 game Night Lords. I, and you played a lot of, yeah, we played lots of Chaos games, <laughs> Jesus. I must have played more than 100 plus games in chaos uh, space yeah, I, marines. I, I have like 70 i think if i combine all i tried emperor's children in five yeah I could, I could summarize black legion world eaters Mina. i didn't try alpha legion because i, I cannot come up with a list <laughs> it's my favorite legion but every time i click a list i'm like oh no i'm not gonna waste four hours playing that <laughs> yeah anyway um yeah, if you like the podcast, um, 
yeah we are just starting out so you we really rely on your feedback we tweaked a little bit about the sound both have new mics um, we hope you liked it um, you can listen it on podcast or uh, no uh, Deezer, spotify itunes or here on youtube we would be happy if you leave, uh, leave um, comments in the section below or uh, like subscribe and give some feedback so uh, what we can do better and um Yeah, I don't know what we're going to talk about next time, but uh, we will find something. Maybe the new Astra or the new World Eaters, or maybe both. Yeah, we need to see. Yeah. Anyway, Chris, I say good night and good, yeah. uh, thanks for the talk. <laughs> good night and hope everyone enjoys this. Bye. Yeah, same. Bye.